All right, so today we're going to talk about variables. And the first question you might have is, well, what is a variable? And that's an excellent question. And to answer it, we're going to have to go back to math class. And yes, I know we all hate math class. However, what you quickly find is that the better you do in math, the more useful and complex programs you'll be able to create in computers. But back to variables. Let's look at an equation. And in this particular equation, we have three operations. Multiplication, where we do 4 times 3. Division, where we're dividing by 2. And equality, where we're showing that the left-hand side of the equation is, in fact, equal to the right-hand side of the equation. So as we got a beautiful equation here, unfortunately, it's not overly useful because it's limited to only calculating for the specific numbers we've put in this equation. If we want to have a more useful equation, we can use algebra and we replace those numbers with letters. So now we have x times y divided by 2 is equal to z. This is a much more useful equation because we can now find the value for z by giving any values of x and y. But it's still limited because we have no meaning for what these values are. It's just a bunch of numbers we're calculating together. So to give it a little bit more meaning, we can use names for those values, which we call variables. So by replacing x, y, and z with base, height, and area, we now have a very meaningful calculation where we're calculating the area of a triangle. And we can calculate the area of any triangle with a given base and height. That's essentially what a variable is. In the world of computers, we can expand this a little further to say that a variable is a symbolic name for a location in memory used to store data. So I'm naming a spot in my computer where I'm going to have a piece of data I can access. Back to that example, we have three variables, which represent three distinct locations in my computer's memory, each one with a name so I can access the data that's stored there at a later time. So how do you create a variable in Java? Well, to do that, you have to have three parts. The type of variable, the identifier of the variable, and the end of line character. So the type of the variable represents what type of information I'm going to store in my variable, as well as the amount of memory it's going to be required to store it. The identifier is the name of the variable. It's what I call my variable so that I know what information it's storing. And then we all know that every line of code in Java always ends with a semicolon. So let's look at the types a little bit more closely. The first type we have is called a Boolean. A Boolean value is used to store a true or false variable, true or false data. A byte is an integer between 0 and 255. A char stores an individual character and only one character. Those characters are any characters that we can have in our ASCII code. So a letter, a number, a symbol, like a star or an exclamation point, a space, all those would be valid characters. The next three we have all store integer values, or in other words, numbers that do not have decimals. They differ in the range of values you can store and the amount of memory that they require. So the larger the range that you can store, the more memory it's going to take. Generally, when choosing which type of variable to use, you want to use the one with the smallest range that still fits the maximum values you're going to contain. So for example, if I wanted a variable to store a person's age, I would use a byte. Why? Because I don't know anybody who's lived to be more than 255 years old. And it uses the smallest amount of memory. The last two types are both used to store decimal numbers. And again, just like the integers, they change in the amount of data that, or the range of data they can store and the amount of memory that they take up. There's a question mark here beside double because a double is so big, so huge, that there is no number that you could possibly need to calculate that can't be stored in a double. One more thing about creating a variable is that if you want to create more than one variable of the same type, you can do it in one line of code by separating the names of those variables with a comma. Now, once we've named our variable and created our variable, we can start manipulating the data stored inside of our variable. We do this by putting whatever we want on the right-hand side of the equation. It will be stored into the variable found on the left-hand side of the equation. So in this example, the number 18 is stored in my age. The values for whatever's in these two variables will be added together, and that will give me my height. 
if I have a weight, say 200 pounds, and I subtract 15 from it, then that value, that new calculated value, will be stored in my weight variable. Now there are some rules that we have to follow when we name our variables. These are called naming conventions. First, whenever you name a variable, always start it with a lowercase letter. Not a number, not a capital letter. Number two, your variable names cannot contain spaces or any punctuation. Instead, you want to use intercap. So if you have more than one word in your variable name, each new word starts with a capital letter. So it's easier to read. I can tell that this is two words, inter and cap, because the new word starts with a capital C. Thirdly, the names of my variables cannot be a keyword. So I can't have a variable named public or static or main because those are all key words that we're using in Java. Number four, my variable must have a unique name so I cannot have two variables with the name username because I won't know which one I'm trying to use so it has to be unique. Number five, the variable names should be descriptive of the information that they're, they're storing so don't create variable names of X, Y, Z, A, B, C because you're lazy create a variable name that represents the data that's stored there because if you have 15 variables all with random names that don't make any sense you're not going to know what represents what. Number six, be careful because variables are case sensitive. Number seven, if you have a variable that is never going to change its value throughout the entire life of your program put it in all uppercase. So for example the value of pi is always going to be 3.14159 blah 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 so that should be put pi, capital P, capital I, because the value will never change. Number eight, the names of your variables should be kept as short as possible, because you're going to get bored writing out a 25 letter variable name every time you want to use it. And number nine, variables should always be accompanied by a description. We'll talk about how to write comments in a future lesson, but just know at this point that you have to have a comment describing what that variable is going to be used for every time you declare it. And the last rule is that variables should be declared at the beginning of a section they're used in. So don't wait until you use the variable to declare it. Instead, declare all your variables together at the beginning of your code. That's it. That's the introduction to variables. And we'll talk to you tomorrow when we can see how to use them in our programs.